Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. Hey Colonial Church, it is a thrill for Helen and I right here in Vancouver area. British Columbia on the other side of the continent, a little north of you, to be able to take this time and to be able to speak into the life of your church. I was thrilled when Pastor Maddie and Jill asked us if we would be part of the Friends and Family Month because we are family, we really are, and we love you. I think that's pretty cool that we got to be asked to be part of this. We love you so much, really. Uh, the time that we've got to spend with Jill and Maddie obviously is beautiful and their family, but we got to meet you as a church family as well. So being with you, even if it is in this way, feels like a great privilege. Right, and we've been kind of locked down in Canada. Have for, we ever? Uh, yeah, forever. And I was talking to Maddie and I said, you know, Helen and I have been discussing if we, if the border opens and we can actually go anywhere, where do we want to go? St. Augustine, <laughs> Florida. <laughs> really, you are in one of the most amazing parts of the world and most of all because of you. And as things have opened up here, do you know this, the last weekend was the first weekend we gathered at our church, Relate Church, in 70, seven zero weeks. And Incredible. It, yeah, there was tears and lots of hugs and and people that recognize what we didn't have and what was missing, mm -hmm. which is really friends and family. It's all about relationships. So we're thrilled to be able to take this time and talk to you about relationships. Oh, if you were to put a title over the message we want to share with you, our thoughts today, it would be called More Than Words. There has been such a disconnect. Not only has it been physically disconnected, and I know that your experience is very different than ours, but this feels very real. I think this last season has given us an opportunity that if we wanted to disconnect, we can kind of go into hiding and just not be as connected. And so the message we want to share today is really about intentionality, uh, really about how can we, with great intention and commitment, rebuild and come back together in, in meaningful, purposeful community. I would love to just share with you a beautiful uh, quote out of a, a book that Henry Nouwen wrote. He's one of my favorite writers and he writes, community is first and foremost a gift of the Holy Spirit, not built upon mutual compatibility, shared affection or common interest, but upon having received the same divine breath, having been given a heart set aflame by the same divine fire, and having been embraced by the same divine love. It is the God within who brings us into communion with one another and makes us one. It consoles us with the revelation that God indeed want, does want to create amongst us the unity we most long for. And this quote has seemed especially meaningful in, in recent days. It talks about, it's not about mutual compatibility in the sense of we all agree exactly the same because if there ever has been a testing of walking in agreement but not necessarily agreeing exactly on everything, this has been a time when that has been tested. And so out of this thought, uh, I guess I want to share something that's pretty personal to me, um, and that is just a month ago, just over a month ago, my closest, dearest, most trusted, treasured friend went to heaven. Didn't see it coming. I mean, I knew she'd go to heaven, but after a 35-year friendship, 27 years of built of her being on staff together with us, our children are the same age, we built life together. Um, she went to heaven very unexpectedly. It shattered me and it, uh, yeah, it's put me through a lot. And it's everything I can do right now to not just burst into tears again. There have been lots of tears continually. Not because um, 
something was wrong with re our relationship, but everything was right about our relationship. And I remember saying to you a few days after she died, maybe the next day, I said, what was it about my relationship with Linda that was so incredibly beautiful? We shared life together, we raised children together, built church together, learned from each other, had hard conversations, had great conversations. But I realized everything we did, everything we did was centered. It was like the stake in the ground that we built our life on and our relationship on was built um, with a mutual love for Jesus. That was what we built on. And if we have that center and core, I know that sounds so simplistic, but I would ask you, are your relationships actually built on the centrality of the love you have for Jesus first? I mean, that is the secret sauce in our marriage. It's not because we, we, we disagree on a lot, just so you know, a lot. I'm right about everything, but we, you know, we disagree on a lot. But when that is central, we can build from there. And so we had hard conversations, difficult conversations, but the one thing I can say is, I don't have one regret, not one, which is surprising because often there are regrets. And so I want to challenge some of those things today. Where are the relationships or the people in your world that God has added into your world, but maybe today are a little bit on the fringe, a little bit on the periphery, and maybe God is beckoning us to reopen some conversations and build in strength. Maybe your marriages are in a place today that there is tension, there is disagreement, there is opportunity for walls to go up. Let's take them down with great intention and with great purpose. Um, her friend was amazing yeah. in so many different she ways. She was our friend. Our friend, yes. <laughs> but I've never seen anyone hurt as bad as my wife when this, when this happened. But the, the thing that was so rich out of it is Yes, she's no longer here, but no. but we know where she is, and heaven's that much richer. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things about Linda is, I don't think she she left any words unsaid. No, she was the best at that. She really was. Every one of her kids, and and when you'd leave her present, she would let you know that she loves you. Yeah, and, always, and, always, always. And I guess that uh, highlights the fact that there is an urgency in this moment. And I feel like the tensions that we've experienced globally, everyone has been walking through something. Um, relationships have been stressed to the max. Yes. You have said it so often, it's like a pressure cooker. Right, this, this whole thing, you know, where, where, you know, isolation and stuff that's happened, it's Opinions. been like a pressure cooker yeah. in terms of all the good things just got better, yeah. but all of the not so good things came to the surface. Yeah. And so how do we process that with wisdom to move us forward in the direction that God would have us go? Um, and I, I want to share the scripture and then we have just three really simple thoughts, but I think are critical thoughts that I think have been very clearly identified in this season for us. Because, I mean, you and I, I think our marriage has gotten stronger in this last year and a half. It definitely has. But well, we've been stuck together. <laughs> really stuck together. I'm like, I need to get out of the house. I am an extrovert. It's like, get me out of this place. I need people. And he's like, I'm happy. Let's just have another date all day long. And I'm like, I love you, but I need other people too. But, <laughs> but there has been a proving and, and a working out. And yes, we're stronger for it, but it hasn't been without some challenges. And I don't mind challenges. Actually, I welcome them if they make me better. And I have learned that about relationships. Relationships, um, I don't want to just coast. I want to grow. I want to flourish. I want to build. And, you know, I'm 65. I became a senior citizen since I've seen you, Colonial Church. I have become a senior citizen. It's traumatic. Um, but and she's been married to one for a while. A long time I've been married to a senior citizen. But, you know, I think that one, of, you know, the Bible talks about teach me. Um, to number our days that I would live with a heart of wisdom. There is an expiry date on Helen Burns and on John Burns and, you know, Linda's date. Um, that was the day Jesus brought her home. But I, I, I feel the urgency of this moment to not put off to tomorrow what you can do today. I don't want to live with regrets. And so th that thought really has framed what we want to share with you. Philippians chapter 2, from the uh, Passion Translation, verses 2 and 3 says, So I'm asking you, my friends, that you be joined together in perfect unity. 
with one heart, one passion, and united in one love. Walk together with one harmonious purpose, and then you will fill my heart with unbounded joy. Be free from pride-filled opinions. That busts me every single time that I say that. Pride-filled opinions, or they will only harm your cherished unity. Um, in I think it's Proverbs 13, though I, I'm nervous about where it is exactly, but it talks about where there is, dis, where there is arguing, there is pride. I've argued with a lot of people recently about my opinions about masks or about vaccines or about presidents or prime ministers or whatever, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, shh, because where there is arguing, there is pride. So. I'm speaking out of um, a very honest, heartfelt understanding of let's get better at this and let's do relationships better. Right. And relationships are the only thing that's going to outlast life. Yep. It's, it's going to go on for eternity. And the thing we can put into relationships that is actually eternal is our words. Yeah. Our words are so valuable and so important. So where there is confusion, let's bring the light of God's presence. And, and when we talk about building relationships, and you, you, know, you said what you had with Linda, that's what church is all about. Yeah. We are building on the same foundation, on this, this love that God has for us. And we're not just here like basking in his love. We're actually doing something together. We're, we like have hooked our arms together to yep. build something that will last forever. It's called the church of Jesus yep. Christ. And that's what we get to do. We love church. Mm -hmm. And it's because we love people and we love what God is doing in people and through us. So let's talk about how do we build those relationships and what are the, the, the really crucial things that yeah. we have to bring into this conversation. And this is simple, but, but really important, I think. And the first point, we just have three of them. And the very first one is number one is have the hard conversations. Don't leave them un undone. We're so often afraid of the hard conversations. In our early years of marriage, we, we were afraid. It was a lot of arguing. There was a lot of escaping. Rather than sitting at the table understanding we have a situation, we have an issue that needs to be resolved, and you're not my enemy, but we have an issue. So we need people who are willing to have, you're not gonna grow the relationship that you truly want in any sphere of life, whether it's with staff, whether it's with, um, your children or your spouse or your friend or your neighbor if we're not willing to have the hard conversations. Jesus had hard conversations and I need people in my life who are truth tellers. And But truth has to come with grace attached to it. If it's all truth, it's harsh, it, it's, um, it feels judgy and, and it feels you know, how do you resolve that? But when it's truth with grace. So grace, if there's just grace, it's kind of sloppy. It can, it, I mean, we need grace, but we need it attached to truth. We need to be truth tellers. And so John chapter 1 and 17, it says here, the law indeed was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Here we're talking about the spirit of unity. And, and even the, in this, we need the unity of truth and the unity of grace working harmoniously together and it says here but Jesus the anointed one unveils truth wrapped in tender mercy both have to be present and again Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 6 says you can trust a friend who wounds you with their honesty but your enemies pretended flattery comes from insincerity okay so church I want to encourage you, who are the people in your world that you need to have hard conversations with, but have them in a place where love is present as well as truth? Not just my opinion matters, I talked about, I mean, I've had some hard conversations with some of the people I love the most in my life um, in recent days. Um, a lot of stuff has flared up because like I said, there's been dissension, there's been disunity, there's been opinion. They read this on the internet and believe this and I hear this and, and so there's confusion. But can we come to the table and just make a decision that you are more valuable to me than my opinion or your opinion. I love you more than this issue. This issue is not gonna take us out. But can we talk to one another with an abundance of truth 
but covered in mercy. I was thinking about this. So say I had spinach in my teeth. You and I are having lunch together and I have spinach in my tooth. Um, I would want you to tell me as a friend to say, Helen, uh, you've got spinach stuck in your teeth, but I don't need you to walk up in front of the whole restaurant and say, by the way, I'm making an announcement. My wife has spinach in her teeth. It's still the truth, but there's a way to say it that covers you like, Helen, you've got spinach in your teeth. So to me, the question is who, who has the right to speak into your life? Yeah. Truth with grace or who are the ones that have earned this position in your world and that's what we need to do is build relationships that that happens in i, I think if you're going to have a deep relationship you've got to have those hard conversations yeah. um, easy conversations don't go anywhere yeah. if you just keep on doing what's easy to do what's comfortable what we've always done nothing changes, changes. but when we begin to speak those, those things that need to be said that, that aren't so easy, but we learn how to say it with grace, that's where we can really begin to change. Yeah. I, I think tough times are the best times. Yeah. You know, people, what are you even talking about? Well, tough times are the opportunity times to make a difference. And relationships are the most important part of life. So when you have opportunities, it, it's tough. I, I just encourage you, that's the time when you really need to step into it. And sometimes the best way to be able to speak into someone else's life is let them speak into yours. Absolutely. It has to be a two-way conversation. And I love how it says this here in Proverbs chapter 27. You can trust a friend who wounds you with his honesty. What does that actually mean? I, I always say that relationships that haven't been tested yet can't be trusted. Test that relationship, come with honesty, but when you come with a sincere heart, and so I would agree the most honoring way to build a relationship is to have a heart that is hearing their heart first, not just about, you need to hear what I have to say, but talk to me. I don't understand where you're coming from. Let's talk about it. And the second one, and I want you to share such a great story in here, is have the unspoken but greatly needed conversations. And this is different than the first one about having the hard conversations. Sometimes it may not be a hard conversation, but it's a necessary conversation. One that is a revelation of your heart towards that person. Don't assume people know what you think or how you feel. I think often we think, well, they know I love them or they know this or they know that, maybe not. When we talk about Linda, I said that uh, I don't think she had any unspoken words, um, no regrets, because words were spoken. So the question is, how many words are still unspoken in your heart? Um, how many people have this place in your heart that you haven't actually used words to tell them about? Or, you know, in other words, how many people do you love that you have not told them that you love them? And the story, I think I've actually shared it with you, but it's worth sharing over and so over much. again, was my dad, who's in heaven today, but, um, you know, I grew up in this, this big family, second oldest of 11. It was more like an army family than anything else, just, to, just because, we, you know, to make things work. Well, um, I never heard from my dad, uh, I'm proud of you. I never heard... I love you. We just don't say those words, you know. It was more comparison and more, you know, you, you need to do this and all the rest of it. Um, and one day, and this was, this was maybe 15 years ago, so, um, uh, you know, I'm probably 40-something, 50-something. And anyway, on Father's Day, I picked up the phone and gave him a call. And that's supposed to do that. That's normal, okay? So normal would be, hey, Dad, happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you. And, and everything goes forward. And, but I said, uh, hey, Dad, happy Father's Day. And he was ready to hang up, like, like thank you. And I said, hold it. Um, I, 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 I need to say something else. And he said, what? And, and I, I, I just need to tell you, um, I'm glad you're my dad. I love you. And there was silence on the other end of the phone. I don't think he knew what to do with that. And then there was this crackling voice that came back and said, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you're mine too. I love you too. Click. He hung up. And, uh, you know, that changed everything. 
That night I went to my brother's house. We're celebrating Father's Day and, you know, with five brothers, five sisters and all the kids, there's 90 of us and it's like a crowd. And I walk into this crowd and my dad sees me and comes right through the crowd to me, uh, puts his arms around, gives me a kiss and says to me, have I ever told you how proud of you I am? I get choked up again telling this story. And he looks at me in the eye and he says, I want to tell you I love you and don't you ever forget it. And from that day on, I never left his presence where he didn't yeah. tell me he loves me and I'm proud of him. But not just me, yeah, all my brothers and sisters. It opened up a door sisters. for the rest of the family. It, it was something that had never been said that needed to be said. Mm -hmm. How many people are in your heart that you've not used the words to let him know what's going on? How many people have you not told that you love them? And, and maybe it's because, well, he's never told me. Well, that doesn't, it no. doesn't, shouldn't change anything. We get the opportunity to actually open those hearts and mm -hmm. open those doors and say those words that really open up life and bring us close to each other. Mm -hmm. Words are eternal yeah. and we can build with them. So what are those words that need to be said? You know, I'm thinking about um, how many pastors and leaders and I'm t government officials, so many people have been doing it tough in this season. It's like they can't seem to get it right. And I, we have watched pastors struggle as uh, it's like, am I leading well? Am I doing this? And I just think how many pastors would have been encouraged because I there's been an, so many that have quit in this season and I'm using this one example though there are many people that have gone through challenges I wonder if their congregation rather than being I know this is not true of colonial church because you're you've been taught graciously and you're a gracious people but we know of many that have have quit and I wonder how much that narrative may have changed if they had just heard from people that I know you're doing it tough right now, pastor. I know you're doing it re tough right now to your boss or to leader or whoever, but I'm, I see you and I'm thankful for you. This is the, the, the closing kind of the caption over that thought is don't close your lips to people you've opened your heart to. Tell them, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you because kindness opens hearts and criticism and judgment will close it, but kindness will open up any heart, so do it. Even if it feels awkward and you think, ah, oh, I've been with this person for 50 years and I've never said it, or 10 years. No, today's a good day. If, if to you say think it. about that, death and life are in the power of the yeah. tongue. And we're going to have the fruit of it. So um, you have the opportunity to sow fruit of life. Yeah. Every day we should get up and think, how many seeds of life can I sow? Which brings us to the third point prophesy. Oh. Yeah, which is so seeds important. I, of life. I love this point because <laughs> because when you think about your life, mm -hmm. it, 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 it has an, an, an expiration date, okay? Yeah. You know, you're not going to be here forever, but the words you sow will be. Live forever. They, they live on and on and on. And words that actually speak of the future, that take a God initiative to plant seed, that give people God's purpose and mm -hmm. God's, God's vision for their future. So many of us, I believe, I really do believe there's thousands and thousands with a call of God on their life, but it's never crossed their mind. Why? Because they've never thought of it. Why? Because they've never heard it. They've never seen it. And when we get to speak something into their life, there's this, 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 this miracle that happens. It's, mm -hmm. it's like something resonates and comes alive inside of them. And, and you can't unhear those kind of words. I call those prophetic words. Yeah. You know, the Bible says that we will give an account one day for every idle, useless, non-working, non-prophetic word that we speak. And, and when I stand before a God, I, I, I want to hear well done in every way. And I think we have the opportunity. You know, just the other day, um, we were with some family and um, one of our nephews, mm -hmm. his son, yeah. he's 10, I think, right? He, he's 10. Well, he was, he was just, you know, playing around, having a good time. And I, I, I saw this opportunity. Yeah. And I said, hey, River, um, you know, when your dad was your age, uh, he was just like you in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I used to say to him all the time, um, you're going to be a preacher and a prophet when you grow up. You're going to be a preacher. It was a call of God on your life. And I believe your dad's doing great things. But maybe that preacher and prophet skipped a generation because I see it in you. 
And I don't think it skipped a generation. It's been added a generation. Right. It, yeah. his, but his eyes lit up yeah. when someone said that. And see, we get to do that. We get to speak into people's lives. It starts with prayer. Yeah. You know, when you pray about people, God's going to actually give you his heart mm -hmm. concerning people. And when you have God's heart concerning people, don't close your lips. No. Use your words. Yeah. So just a closing thought I'd love to wrap it with. You know, we're talking about life and just our own personal journey of life. And yeah, I'm here at 65 and, you know, definitely have done more living um, than I will yet do. Does that make sense? So yeah, I'm on, you know, more the autumn side of life. And I'm okay with that. But I love looking back at the journey of my life and marking out the people that have helped get me to where I am today because I did not get here on my own. There have been people that have made deposits into my life, that have spoken life to me, people that have challenged me, people that wouldn't let me go when I wanted to run. And so many of those people have, and many of them have gone on to heaven. But I think of how they have impacted me. So I wanna challenge you today, Colonial Church to take a look at the trajectory of your life, or if you were to map it out, who are those significant voices and influences in your life? Thank God for them, and if they're still living, call them and say thank you, or have a, have a coffee with them and say thank you. And then who can you be that for? Don't just, it, it's not gonna just happen by osmosis, it's gonna happen with intentionality, and I would encourage you, do the work to invest that. And if you're in my season of life, do it all the more. Because often we think our voices become irrelevant when you aren't this young, you know, young chick anymore, or young man anymore. I think our voices are more relevant than ever and don't ever silence them. Use your words to shape the lives of the people that God has put you together with and allow the fruit of that to build the future beautifully, magnificently. We love you, Colonial love you. Church. Thank you for this opportunity. We think you are so special. You, Can't wait yeah. to see you in person. Well, I hope that message inspired and encouraged you. Well, before we finish, I would just love to ask you one question. The question is this, have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm not talking about knowing of Him. See, that's education. I'm talking about knowing Him personally. That's a relationship. Friend, I wonder if you've ever said yes to Jesus, opened up the doors of your heart, surrendered ownership of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and we confess with our mouths that God raised Him from the dead, Romans says that we will be saved. I wonder if you've ever made that choice. I wonder if you've ever said yes to Him. I would love the honour and the privilege of leading you in a prayer right now, right where you're at, into a new life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ. It's as simple as praying this prayer. And if you're ready to make that choice, why don't you just pray this prayer right now with me? Say, Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you rose again so that I could have life. Forgive me of my sins, of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus, to be a child of God for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. If you pray that prayer, you're saved. We believe you're on your way to heaven. But what we'd love to do is give you a free gift from our church. It's a New Believers Bible. And if you pray that prayer, we would love for you to reach out to us at colonialchurch.life and we will send you this free gift of a new Bible to you. We are so excited as you take this first step in your new journey of faith. God bless you, church, and we'll see you next week.